any progress with it yet? Well, I think it's good. Doesn't mean that David's going to go for it. Sure, it'll be fine. Well, it's easy for you to say. You're not one's got to stand up and pitch to twelve people. But are you sure you didn't take my USB stick? I'm sure. Well, good luck with it anyway. I'll see you when I get in. Bye. Oh, come on! Yes! Little faster! Thank you! All night, yeah? <laughs> Hi, Chris. You alright? Mm -hmm. Oh, look at you all prepared with your healthy meals. Yeah, I want to make sure I fit into the dress. Oh, don't be silly. You'll look great. Get coffee? Nah, I'm going to wait till I really need one. Are you sure? Go on then. Ambulance service, is the patient breathing? Hi, my name is Claire. I'm calling from the ambulance service. I understand you've had a full today sir. Is that right? Okay, sir. Bear with me while I try to locate you. An ambulance is on its way. It's en route, but we can't attend until the police arrive and said it's safe to do so. All right? Hello? Right, glad I could help. My colleagues will take over now. Bye. Ambulance service, is the patient breathing? Okay, all right, I want to help you. What's your name? Okay, yeah, I'm going to do my best. Can you tell me your name? Debbie, okay. Okay, and is he... Debbie, is he breathing? Right. Debbie? Debbie, do you have a garden? Right, is there somewhere you can put the dog, please? It's very noisy, I can't hear you. Debbie, could you put the dog somewhere quiet? Debbie, I can't tell you what to do with the dog barking like that. Alright, well done. Debbie? Sir, please. Debbie, I've an ambulance already on the way to you, but I'm going to need you to answer some questions for me so I can see if I can help you, okay? Debbie, is he breathing? Are you injured? No, not really, no, yes, to get through. Okay, I'm just going to ask you a few questions so I can carry out an assessment. Some of them might not seem relevant. Just answer them as best as you can. Have you had any bleeding? No. If you pop your hand on your tummy, does it feel warm to touch? Yes. Out of what? Is he in a high chair? Yes. Debbie? <laughs> okay, Debbie, I'm going to talk you through exactly what to do, but you need to listen to me, okay? No, Debbie, stop. You could be doing more harm than good. Now, what do you think he choked on? Is he able to cough noisily? No, can't do anything. What do I do? Is he unconscious now? No. Alright, could his symptoms be due to an allergic reaction, Debbie? Oh, Okay, can you see the object in his mouth? No. All right, Debbie, I'm going to need you to get him to try and cough, okay? I want you to prepare a soft area on the ground, okay? Just use something clean and soft. This is to put the baby on when we get it out, okay? Do you understand me so far? So give him a sharp thumb between the shoulder blades with the heel of your hand. Do this five times, but stop if the object comes out. Okay, that's it, well done. 
Go on, well done, Debbie. You're doing really well. Good. Okay, keep going, Debbie. What I want you to do is get your bottom onto the edge of the soft area you've already prepared, grab your knees and just pull them to your chest, okay? Yeah. Has this removed the object? No! Can you now see an object in his mouth? Look into his mouth, Debbie. There's nothing! Oh Alright, okay. I need you to stand behind him and put your arms around his middle. Now pull sharply inwards and upwards five times. Stop if the object comes out. So clench your fist and grasp it with the other hand. All right? That's good, Debbie. Well done. Has the item been dislodged? No, I can't see anything. All right, Debbie. Debbie, I know this is really hard, but the ambulance is going to be with you very soon. OK, I need you to get Jacob onto a firm surface. He's out. Is he crying? That's brilliant. I can hear him. Just wipe his mouth and nose dry with a clean towel. All right. Debbie, listen to me. Tilt his head back. Put your ear to his mouth, looking down his chest. Can you feel or hear a breath? Is his chest rising and falling? Okay. All right, the ambulance is turning down your road now, so I need you to go to the door and open it so that they can get in. All right, let me know when you've done that. Debbie, is the door open? All right, if he's not breathing, I'm going to need you to start chest compressions. Debbie, I need you to start chest compressions. Debbie, that may be the case, but I still need you to start chest compressions until the ambulance crew can take over. Debbie? All right, Debbie, if the ambulance crew is there, I need you to hang up with me, okay? Debbie? Debbie, hello? Ambulance service, is the patient breathing? Okay, good. And is he conscious? Right, can you tell me your dad's name? Why do I like working for the ambulance service? Every day is different. Um, you're not waking up doing the same thing day in, day out. And you go home at the end of the day thinking that you've done a good job, you've changed someone's life for the better. I like working for the ambulance service because at the end of every shift, I know that I've helped someone in their darkest hour get the help that they need. I guess it's being able to help people. So in sort of a moment of just absolute panic or absolute distress, you know, someone goes, who do I call? Will we phone 999 for an ambulance? And it's you at the end of the line that picks it up and helps them. The best thing about working in the ambulance service is knowing that at the end of the day, you have made a difference to somebody's life. You may not have done a CPR call that day, but you may have done a mental health call and saved somebody from you know, potentially killing themselves. The most challenging part of my job is the different calls we get, like the traumatic ones and like the suicidals, trying to calm them down and building a rapport with the person on the phone that you've never ever met. Uh, the most challenging thing will probably be the shifts you work. Um, if you're not a shift worker coming in here, it can be quite hard. The most challenging thing is sometimes patients' expectations. They all want an ambulance and they all want it straight away and sometimes they don't realise that unfortunately we just don't have the resources. I guess when you get a difficult call, so there will be, there will be some times when actually people are beyond help. You can't help them. Um, and I think for me that's the most difficult part because that's why I started working here, to be able to help people. And when you get that call and you actually can't help, I think that's the most difficult part. It can be one of the hardest jobs. It can also be a fantastic job. But you do need to be prepared for abuse. You need to be prepared for everything. It is what the job is, sadly, what the job has become. But the job can be a fantastic job at times when you get that rosk and when you get that person who's just been saved.